Hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to be making a mega shotgun. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen a post about this, but essentially what I've done here is make a mega shotgun. So it takes three mega darts up front, and then this will be the sort of coupler for a homemade blaster. Now the intent of this is to take out some special classes that can only be taken out with certain types of ammunition. Now normally these catch me off guard and they could be quite devastating if you're not prepared with a sidearm of something like that. So I just want to make something really quick and small that I can pull out real quick and be able to hopefully defend myself. This is going to be a sort of Frankenstein project as I've just finished this piece and these were two other pieces I was finishing for separate projects but we can sort of combine them into one functional blaster. Now this is a plunger head. I have some o-rings off camera that I could use for it and it goes to a 3 8 diameter plunger rod. I have aluminum but I might do 3D printed material just for this one because it's going to be just a quick trial. Then I did a video about this guy a little while ago, but it's a 3D printed rainbow catch, so it should perform pretty well for this, and we'll give it the test run that I meant to before I upload the files for this. Okay, now we're back after a little bit of CAD work. I've made a few additional parts to sort of finalize this blaster. I did a plunger rod, a plunger head, a pullback piece, and a little firing button. Now the key with this 3D printed plunger assembly is that I offset a hole running down the length of all the parts. So the plunger head has an offset hole and the pullback as well as you can see. And that will allow me to run a 632 threaded rod throughout the length of it so it should reinforce it quite a bit. So normally you'd make this out of Delrin or a uh, aluminum but for this purpose, I think the reinforced PLA with the threaded rod should be fine. The plastic colors are sort of a hodgepodge of whatever I had on the printer at the time of whipping out these different parts. So the next step is going to be cutting down a spring. I set it up for 5 inches of K26. This is a full length one. I gotta cut it down, obviously. So that'll sit right around here between the plunger head and the backrest there. And the other main thing I need to do is make a plunger tube and main body really that'll go from here all the way to the front of the blaster here. But then as you can see it's set up so when I pull it back to prime it, it'll lock into position and then pushing this button, which I'll put this little button on, will release it and then it'll slide forward and fire the blaster. This front piece is designed to accept four of the 632 square nuts that I've been using for a lot of my projects recently. So they just press into position and then they should line up with the hole that you see on the body. Now that those are all set into position, I could take this rubber seal and set it in around the lip up here. I'm going to apply a bit of glue just to make sure that it doesn't come loose, but I just need to press that into position and it should be good to go. That should provide a bit of dampening in case you dry fire the blast or, or if there's extra energy after shooting the dart off to prevent damage. So I started off with an 8 inch section of the clear PVC. Now this is a little longer than I needed to be but that gives me a little wiggle room to adjust my fitting to make sure that everything is good before I can then lop off the back section to clean it up to the finished length. I just marked off the four holes that I need to drill and countersink so that way I can glue the front piece into position and then lock it in with the four screws to make sure it doesn't come off. For those of you who are unfamiliar, countersinking is essentially using a bit like uh, this guy to put a bit of a taper on the inside of the hole and that will allow the head of the screw, such as this, to sit a bit more flat against the outside of the blaster. You can accomplish the same thing with a larger drill bit. You just have to be really careful that you don't punch all the way through. You only want to go about halfway or so just to give it a little bit of room for the head of the screw to sit in a little deeper. 
Quick tip, you want to sand the inside surface of the tube before you glue the front on to promote adhesion, otherwise the surface is pretty smooth and the glue might not take as well. Okay, so now that that is complete, I can take the newly cut spring and the plunger rod assembly and I could roughly line it up and I will need to take this rainbow catch mechanism that I made in another video. I will link that in the description if you're interested. So I got to take this out of this test piece, put it into here, line it up and then machine my holes into the main body and that will be the majority of my drilling and then it should just be final assembly and then we can finally test the blaster. So here I have the machined main body. I drilled those holes for the screws and then the trigger screw as well. And then I also shortened up the tube a bit before I put it together, as once I assemble it, it'll be a little more difficult. So I just did that now preemptively. I put my threaded rod through the plunger rod, the head, and then this pull piece on the back. And then there's a lock nut on both sides of that to hold it in place. So I just have to take this whole assembly, lubricate the head, put it in the plunger tube, slide it into the correct position, and then I could put all my screws in and begin testing. So after some testing, it was determined that although it fires occasionally all three, for the most part it fires one or sometimes two of the mega darts. Uh, very inconsistent performance. I'm not sure if that's because the diameter of the mega darts versus their wall thickness, so there's a lot of extra dead space on the center. So they might squish a bit differently than normal darts, and 3D printed uh, circles aren't always the most consistent, and it could have over extruded in some of these layers and under. So I sanded it out, and that's the performance that we got originally it was a little worse so maybe if we used a like metal like a metal uh, tube similar to that of like the mega caliburn it might make it uh, perform a bit more consistently so I might keep that in mind if I decide to make a second one of these however for right now what I'm going to do is take these PETG tubes and then I'm going to wrap them in e tape like this then I'm going to glue them into the barrel and then that will convert it to shoot normal darts and because the inside of the PTG is a bit more consistent it should fire pretty well hopefully. Also I noticed that these screws uh, are leaking a little bit potentially so I put a little bit of glue in there so hopefully that'll improve the performance a bit more and give it a better seal. So now that the PETG barrels have dried in, we can test it out. Add this sticker, which adds at least 10 feet of range. And quick uh, self-plug if you want to get these in a rubber patch form. I had them made recently, and they're available on my Etsy shop. Link in the description below. So right now I have three half darts loaded. I can just take a Sharpie or like a ramrod, load them all the way in, and then we can give it a test shot. The workshop's in desperate need of some cleaning on the other side, so uh, excuse the mess real quick, but let's get this a shot. I found that you could also load it with six half darts, so you start by loading in the three originally, you do the same ramrod technique, and then you can put in the other three and they sort of rest on top. Then you get a six dart sort of burst. But uh, as you can see, it's not always the most consistent with shooting, like for example it shot both out of the bottom and only one out of the other two, so it might be a function of air volume or just the seal not being too great, but there's definitely some optimization that could go into this as shooting six starts at once is pretty darn fun. I think there's definitely some optimization that could go into this, however there is a lot of promise for this in the future as a platform. I've always sort of enjoyed the idea of having a sort of pistol shotgun, so we'll see how this develops in the future, and maybe with some future iterations I can improve the design a bit more. Some things i definitely like to do would be to A, get the triple mega to work because that was really the intended goal for this. So whether that be more optimization, like I mentioned, a larger air volume, a stronger spring or something like that, I'll have to play around with it. Uh, I'd also like it to be its own sort of standalone platform while the stick is kind of neat. I think I'll probably work it more to a pistol sized blaster for the next iteration. And then I'd also like to reduce the amount of machining involved because there's definitely some variability involved with uh, that. 
Overall though, for my first stab at making a homemade blast, I'm pretty happy with the catch mechanism and the trigger actually performs pretty well. Let me just, uh, like I mentioned, the seal isn't too great, but we can improve that for future iterations. Uh, like I said, maybe we'll work on removing some of the machining, but uh, that'll have to be determined as I work on it. So anyway guys, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer. Hopefully I remember to upload all the files for this. If you want to get a patch, they're on Etsy, which I'll link as well. So if you guys have anything particular you'd like to see in the future, let me know again in the comment section down below. And then as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another video.